This is the Zlaba Modular Diode Chaos. It's one of the smallest at 3 HP, easiest to use with just one knob, and least expensive chaos modules you'll find. It's even available as a kit. But it does have a few idiosyncrasies, so let's just give a quick run through it, what you say. It has three semi-related outputs, X, Y, and Z, plus a trigger output. And let's look at each of those. I'm going to put the X output up on the green trace, the Y output up on the blue trace, the Z output up on the magenta, or pink or red trace, whatever you want to call it, and then the trigger output up on the yellow trace. I've been running at a fairly high rate now, and you'll find that the rate doesn't really work quite like an LFO. It kind of just goes from simpler to more complex with really crazy behavior at the end. For example, if I slow it all the way down, the evolution is a bit slower in the three voltage outputs compared to, say, in the middle setting, but not a drastically different change. You'll see real changes in behavior as you get near the clockwise extreme. Matter of fact, I'll just go to that clockwise extreme and you see it just goes nuts. The triggers and the Z output actually go up into the audio range. As you back off, you'll start to see some patterns here. To the triggers and little warbles in the green trace that are related to it. At these high so-called rates, the trigger output and the green output seem to be related, but when you slow down, you don't really see a relationship anymore between the trigger outputs and the green outputs. You see there's not much difference there. But what you will find is that the Z output does act like kind of an attack decay generator whenever there's a trigger. There's a slope right there whenever the trigger comes out. Well, that's another looking at things. Let's go ahead and listen to what it sounds like. For now, I'm going to pull the trigger output, just because, frankly, that's visually distracting. I'm going to drone my Moog. Nice little two oscillator drone from the disting on the Moog. And since filter cutoff is very obvious, particularly with high resonance, we're going to use that as the parameter that we're going to control. This is the X output. And you can hear easily as it goes a little bit below zero, the filter closes. As it goes above zero, it rises. This is at the central rate setting. And it's nice and slow, very sloth-like in that way. So I go all the way to the lowest rate. You notice that in general, all the CV's excursions get lower in amplitude at the extremes, except for the uh, green output at the clockwise extreme. Go up to about one quarter. The center half, two thirds of the range, it's kind of like the sweet spot for this module. Wider CV ranges. It's a nice activity. There's about three quarters up. And again, not the huge changes in rate for the rate knob, but definitely change in activity. A little bit more of those humps, almost like a resonant filter. And again, as we approach the last tiny bit of the clockwise is where green, the X output in particular, goes crazy. Get more of these oscillations. To damp down on their own and then start up again. And back off to half of the so-called rate or activity. The X output is definitely the most animated of the outputs. By contrast, I find the Y output to be the smoothest and most calm output. I'll switch the filter cutoff over to that output. Much more gradual changes. How much difference at lower rates? This is the slowest rate. Go up 
dropped about one quarter rate. Not a big change in behavior, back to half. Again, the amplitude tends to go up towards the middle part of the rate control. About three quarters rate. Still very similar behavior. So if you want something that's pretty constant and sloth-like and smooth, that would be the Y output. We'll go up to the full clockwise. And even though the X output's going crazy here, I'll pull that cable for now. The Y output, if anything, is changing even more slowly. Almost frozen at that end. Back off a little bit. Almost counterintuitive there. There we go. Away from the extreme, now we start getting some excursions again. And again, the Y output is much less animated than the X output. Somewhat in between is the Z output. There's some settings where it has more changes, actually more sudden changes than the other outputs. But again, there's some differences across the ranges. I'll go to that output again. Go to half rate. Slow moving, like Y, but every now and then you'll get this attack. Just like that. And they'll fall off and then undulate again. Add a little bit of a soft attack. There we go. So the changes are more sudden with the Z output, even if they're slow. Go down to minimum rate. Slow evolutions, similar to the other outputs of this low setting. Let's still get that little bit of an attack every now and then. Quarter rate. straight to three-quarter rate. Look at more of those attacks. Those attacks are actually related to when the trigger's going high. I'll put the yellow trace back in so you can see when the trigger's going high. Whenever there's a trigger, we're getting a little nice attack envelope out of the Z output. Again. Now what's interesting about the Z output is I increase the rate towards that extreme clockwise where things go crazy, particularly the triggers and the axis output. The Z output actually just goes down to zero at that high rate. You can't really hear any changes. Now I'll go ahead and pull the yellow and green, the X and the trigger out. So you can see that the magenta is pretty much flat line. That's the Z output. I have to back off a little bit. Now I start hearing some of those fake attacks again. And I have to back off to at least three quarters. So now we start getting some nice movement out of the Z output. So I personally find the X output to be the most active, the Z output to have the most sudden change as if it's an attack, and in between, the Y output to be the smoothest. And again, there's these triggers. Let's go ahead and plug in that trigger. And let's use that to trigger some envelope generators. And take that output there. And I'll take this output here and instead run that to my cutoff. So that whenever there's a trigger, the yellow trace, this bottom output, this envelope will fire. Go ahead 
and give us a nice envelope. We can make it a short blip if we want to. Some additional behavior hearing is that the VCA is going to be triggered as well on the mother. I'll pull that up for now. Now we just a nice envelope caused by the trigger output, firing our envelope, controlling filter cutoff. And by the way, that is an interesting artifact of the mother, that if you already have the VCA turned on and you give it a gate, you'll get this additional strange overdrive. Very odd. Go back to drone again. And turn it off. So it's a nice, simple source of chaotic voltages inside your system. Maybe it doesn't have quite the range that some of the other ones, particularly Ian Fritz designs have, but it's small, it's inexpensive. I'm gonna add this to my portable case just to have another source of smoothly changing random voltages to go ahead and control other parameters to add more life to my patches.